Hi, I recently published the Steam page for my game Chickens Don't Fly with a demo available for everyone to try and I want to share with you how it all went. But first, let me give you an idea what my game is all about in case you don't know. So, Chickens Don't Fly is a Fodian slash precision platformer game I've been working on for quite a while. It's heavily inspired by games such as Jump King, Getting Over It and the likes. My take on the genre is making it a wacky physics based game where the main selling point is the in-game level editor where people can create and share their levels with friends and the community. It's now been roughly one and a half months since the Steam page went live and people outside my friend circle actually got to try the demo and gave me their thoughts and feedback. And generally speaking, it's been mostly positive in terms of the feedback. People say the concept is funny and the controls feels nice and polished once you get the hang of how the rope physics work. But probably the best kind of feedback I've gotten is that the game feels very challenging but in a very fair way, so that when they finally beat the hard part of the level, it feels very rewarding. And if they happen to fall back down, they can quite easily manage to get back to where they were before. And that's exactly the feeling I'm trying to convey. It's the same feeling I got when I played Dark Souls for the first time or Elden Ring. You bang your head against the wall for a long time but once you finally beat that boss it feels amazing. So thank you to all the people who took the time to play the demo and provide this awesome feedback. Now that's not to say it's all been sunshine and rainbows. Some people were actually quite frustrated with how the physics worked and didn't make it very far. And some people think the game is simply too hard and needs more checkpoints and safe areas. Quite a few people have also said that the backgrounds are boring and lack interesting visuals. And all of it is fair criticism and some of them I'm definitely planning on addressing for the full game. That said, I also don't fully agree with everything. As a developer you have your own vision for the game and it won't necessarily align with every player's idea of what the game should be. And that's completely fine. You just need to discern which feedback is valuable for your vision of the game and which are not. Also I'm well aware that my genre is a very niche one and it's definitely a specific set of gamers with the right mindset who have this kind of patience for games that makes you lose progress so often and play the content over and over again until you beat it. Trust me, I'm, I'm one of them and I know you're out there too somewhere. But if you've ever wondered how to make your own game and put it on Steam, allow me to introduce you to the sponsor of this video, Brilliant. If you're someone who learns best by doing, you're going to love Brilliant. Brilliant is exactly the place where you learn by doing with thousands of interactive lessons in math, data analysis, programming and AI. Instead of just reading or watching lectures, you'll be solving problems and tackling challenges that deepen your understanding. One of the things I really appreciate about Brilliant is their daily challenges. These bite-sized problems are not only a great way to keep your mind sharp, but they also help reinforce what you've been learning. Right now I'm working through Brilliant's course on vectors, which is super relevant for anyone into game development like me. They take you through a course where you're designing an asteroid type game, covering a lot of the necessary vector math to get you set up. Understanding vectors is crucial for things like physics simulations, character movement and interactive gameplay elements. For example, my character uses plungers to aim and throw in certain directions to help him escape. I use a lot of vector math here to calculate the direction it's going, the force it should have, whether or not it collides with any solid objects on its path and so on. Brilliant has really helped me solve these kind of problems for my game and generally improve my understanding of all the math behind it. So to try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash or click on the link in the description. You'll also get 20% off an annual premium subscription. Thank you to Brilliant for sponsoring this video. Now let's take a look at some actual raw statistics. The player count, we have 119 people on Steam, we have 14 people on Itch, and that means we have a total of 133 players. Now for time played, we have an average time of 34 minutes, and that's a median time at 12 minutes. And I have a funnel describing how far people make it into the game, with checkpoint 1 being the beginning of the game and checkpoint 17 being the last checkpoint. And in total we have a 3.8 completion rate, meaning 3.8% of all the players completed the demo. And for wishlists, I have a total of 174 wishlists, 12 deletions, which puts me at 161 current wishlists. Overall, I'm slightly confused on how to interpret these statistics. On one hand, I kinda expected the demo completion rate to be low and in some sense also the median playtime because I wasn't really sure that I would actually hit my target audience very well with this initial demo launch. 
And I can easily imagine that games like Jump King and Getting Over It also have a pretty low completion rate, although definitely a higher median playtime than mine for sure. But on the other hand, these numbers are really low. Worryingly low? I'm, I'm not sure. I don't know what to compare them with. And to be honest, I don't have that much data to begin with, so perhaps I shouldn't look too much into it for now. I noticed here in my completion funnel that at a very specific point, a huge amount of players simply dropped off. So naturally, I took a look in the game to see where that specific part of the level was, and to no surprise, it was at this little bit, just before area 2, where most people didn't make it past and quit. It seems this section of the map was too much of a change in difficulty, so I had to make a small change to the level design here. Some people got upset that I made the game quote unquote easier, but that's not really the main takeaway from this change. To illustrate this point, let me show you a clip from Ponty Pants for the in-game A Difficult Game About Climbing. You're gonna fall back down all the way to the bottom, forcing you to restart. And then you're gonna rage quit. And we can't have that now, can we? There is such a thing as boiling the frog slowly. We need to make the player feel invested in the game first, and then we crank up the heat. As he very beautifully explains, this is the very first area of the game. You want people to get hooked on the gameplay and then you make it more challenging. It was very clear when viewing the data that this section was simply too steep of a change in the difficulty curve, so it had to be tuned in order for it to feel more naturally difficult. I did see a small increase in the completion rate after I pushed out the update with the new level design. It made it easier for people to reach the second area and I still believe this is the right choice. As for a wishlist, I mean, of course, I would have loved it to be higher. You don't get on the new and trending page when you're launching with 160 wishlists. But there's also still a good amount of time left until the game is finished. And that's why I made the Steam page so early as well, so there's more time to gather wishlists. Which is the perfect time for you to also go wishlist the game if you haven't already. As you can see, it really does help, so thank you. I took some inspiration from GMGK's video about feedback and created a spreadsheet where I could easily organize the feedback I got into different types of categories, how many times it's been mentioned and how much I personally agree with the feedback on a scale from 1 to 5, where 5 being the highly agreed. And as you can see, I've already started implementing some of it, like something simple as adding a windowed full screen mode for easier tapping in and out of the game, but also some of the more gameplay specific feedback. There were a few people who reported that if you used a second plunger in a more straight horizontal direction, you would oftentimes get swung back in the opposite direction, which would cause a lot of frustration. Especially since it happened quite a lot during the last part of the demo, right before completing it. I fixed it so that the issue shouldn't occur in those situations again. There's a lot more feedback I want to get to, but right now I'm focusing on new content and actually finishing the story. Also. I want to give a huge shout out to our community member Silent, I'm hoping I'm pronouncing your name right, who currently holds the world record at a whopping 1 minute and 43 seconds. I'll leave a link in the description for the video so you can see for yourself. And does anyone think they can beat it? I mean the record is even better than mine, so feel free to join the discord and give it a go, link is in the description. In the last video I mentioned that we were so close to a thousand subscribers and I'm super happy to see that we finally beat that milestone. So thank you to everyone who subscribes and supports the channel and this game. It really means a lot. And of course if you haven't already you should really click that subscribe button down there and like the video. It truly helps. As I mentioned I'm clocking along with new content for the game and I'm excited to show it off but that'll have to wait for the next video. But you can always join the discord to get sneak peeks at all the current stuff I'm working on for the game. And that's all for now. Thank you to all those who took the time to play the demo and provide all the necessary feedback. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.